Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says it's his sacred duty to speak to a joint session of Congress about the dangers of a bad deal with Iran. Speaking to American Jewish leaders meeting in Jerusalem, Netanyahu called Iran's pursuit of nuclear weapons, quote, the most urgent security concern facing the world. The U.S. and other international players are negotiating with Iran over its nuclear program. Netanyahu has been at odds with the White House and the Israeli left wing for weeks over the invitation to address the U.S. Congress. His opponents charge the speech is politically motivated because it comes just two weeks before Israeli general elections. But Netanyahu responded to the criticism with three questions, saying the very survival of his country is at stake. Why Congress? Why Washington? Why now? Because of the grave dangers posed by the deal that is on the table right now. I don't see this issue in partisan terms. The survival of Israel is not a partisan issue. It concerns everyone. Netanyahu is set to speak to Congress on March 3rd. Former governor and presumptive U.S. presidential candidate Mike Huckabee sat down with Jerusalem Dateline and discussed a wide variety of issues, from Iran to Benjamin Netanyahu's upcoming speech to the U.S. Congress. Well, Governor, thanks for joining us once again. Great to be Great with you, Chris. Yeah. You were talking earlier about uh, Iran and comparing it to something you uh, used to experience as a kid in, in our southern Arkansas. Yeah. What was that uh, analogy? Rattlesnakes. You know, when you're dealing with rattlesnakes, you don't try to figure out why the rattlesnake is going to bite you. You don't try to reason with the rattlesnake. You don't pet the rattlesnake. You don't feed him. Um, you don't accommodate him. You realize that if the rattlesnake gets his way, he's going to bite you. He'll bite you because that's his nature, and nothing's going to change his nature. We're naive if we think that somehow Iran can be tamed because their government cannot be tamed. Their government has denied the Holocaust. Their government has threatened, even from the podium of the United Nations, that they would destroy Israel and wipe it off the face of the earth. They have uh, abused their own people. They've shot women in the streets who dared oppose them and wanted to bring a, uh, a vote to the people. These are people who believe that it is their duty, and they believe charged by God to kill everybody who doesn't agree with their radical form of their religion. That's an irrational, unreasonable worldview. Iran obviously poses a, a major existential threat to Israel, but you say that it also represents uh, a threat to America. What do, what do you say to Americans about that? A lot of Americans don't understand that Israel is simply the canary in the coal mine. And in the old days, in the coal mines in America, the miners would take a canary into the coal mine with them. Birds are very sensitive to uh, any toxic gas. And so if they took the canary down in the coal mine and the canary died, they only have minutes to get out. That means that well, their lungs are a little more capable than the bird, but they're going to die because that means that there is noxious gases in that coal mine, and the death of the canary means that theirs is imminent. When I say that Israel is the canary in the coal mine, Whatever happens to Israel is the warm-up act for what's intended for the United States. I mean, the Iranians are the ones who said, Israel is the little Satan, but America is the big Satan. How do we not see that? How do we not understand that the ultimate target is not Israel? What happens to Israel is truly the canary in the coal mine for what, what's mm -hmm. next for us. And what would you say about the upcoming uh, deadline for the Iran nuclear uh, negotiations with P5 plus one, including the U.S., I guess that comes up on March 24th. Iran's never been trustworthy in any of its uh, dealings. I don't know why we would suddenly think that they would have, uh, you know, a road to Damascus experience. The only road to Damascus they've taken is to supply uh, weaponry and arms to Hezbollah and Hamas. Uh, there, there's never been some awakening that, oh, we want to play nice now. We're not going to abuse people. We're not going to fund terrorism. This is, this is what they do. There's a lot of controversy, as you know, both on, uh, in Israel and in the United States about the upcoming speech by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. What's your position on his speech? Well, of course he should make it because the American people need to hear what he has to say. His perspective is a very important one because Israel is very close to the geographical threat that Iran uh, would, would hold and even to the uh, existential threat that they've, they've clearly articulated. What's important is that we stand with our ally, let the whole world know that we're shoulder to shoulder. We stand for freedom. We stand for the same things. Uh, while the Prime Minister's here, 
let's have him over to the White House for ch a chat. We'll have lunch. We'll let the whole world see that there are mm -hmm. bigger things than whatever uh, personality conflicts there may be. And that's what I think should have happened. Governor, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate thank you, it very Chris. Much. Appreciate it.